This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Ruhr Planner, Mr. Green, Camp Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at Noisidal, Ionity, Circle K, yeah, mail chargers over there. And today we're going to do range test with Opel Mocha E. So finally we get a proper color, eh? Mostly I've been getting gray and black and white, and those are not technically colors, they are just 50 shades of gray. This one is green, yeah, from the green hell. No, I don't know. But uh, Mocha E, you see, it's a fairly compact car. I think size-wise, uh, length-wise, looks like uh, a Peugeot E28, but it's a little bit taller. It's like a fat uh, Corsa E, that's what people say. Okay, what is important? Tires, Michelin Primacy 4, dimension 215, 55, 18. All right. I guess we can also double check the back that is the same 215 55 18 yeah okay anyway let's uh prepare here you can see the interior but i'm gonna do it uh, yeah it's a better setting i do the interior review in another video so um we are actually not gonna charge now we will just uh, start driving the 90 test and since we already know the battery roughly then okay i'll explain later but we're gonna go now a 90 test we are on the move now, so we have to cruise at 93 kilometers per hour on the speedo to match 90. Um, this consumption is a bit high though, look at that, 168 watt hour per kilometer and we were going downhill. So uh, compared to the EC4, we're supposed to have lower than 150 consumption right now. Could be the wind, I don't remember, but no, no, we have wind from the sun, we should have tailwind even, but look at this. Huh? Look at this, 71%. This is the first Stellantis car that shows me percentage in the instrument cluster while we are driving and not only when we are plugged in. This is the right way to go it. Opel for the win. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so now we're gonna go a little bit more and then we check the weight of the car. And man, it is busy over here. <sighs> Look at that traffic. Stau almost. Ah, shit, C-A, it means kaput, yeah, the scale is kaput. Okay, we have to check another one at uh, Garden Moon later tonight. Okay, let's check the weight of the car, it comes in a bit weird order, but front axle, this is the backup scale, zoop, 904, Ooh, really, okay, the full weight of the car. One six, huh? What? Okay, one six sixty. Hmm, it's actually lighter than uh, some of the other ones. Okay, okay, good. Whoa, look at Mjösen today. No win. Ha! Win still for the win. Yes, look at that. And the temperature outside today is twenty four. Perfect condition for the. Oh, now we're getting okay, Charlie. I mean, uh, okay consumption. Okay, 145. Yes, finally we can say I only go home. Yeah, no, but we have tailwind. Well, actually we have no wind, but we have uh, downhill. So, um, yeah, I think uh, this time I will only go to uh, S band back again. We are only measuring the consumption number here, ABA, and then we do the high speed run. And yeah, we have auto steer here, so the car is steering for me. It works into great now. Earlier I had to com completely switch it off because it would keep running and trying to run into the ditch. <laughs> but it does stay fine now for some reason. <laughs> so the auto stair is a bit moody. I have my hands ready. This is the car is gonna pass. Okay, let me see. Yeah. So for the most part, yeah, now, now it bugs me. Yeah, you see whole steering wheel, whole steering wheel. Okay, what's gonna happen? I have my hands ready. I just want to see what happened. Oh, what the heck? It totally disengaged. That was niche good. That was niche good. If you don't hold the steering wheel, it will just disengage all the stair and then you run into the ditch. No, no, no. It does. The, the safest way is to keep steering, but then reduce speed. Uh, okay, that's a fail. But okay, let's uh, get on with the test, the range test. Well, we're back at the starting point. So that was a fairly short run, but um, we wanted to only measure the consumption. So it was 149 according to the trip meter. I mean, yeah, we have to then check for error reporting and, well, I mean, sorry, 
we have to check for distance error and then we will correct for it. So now we are charging to 100% and then we will actually do the, the 100% down to almost 0% on the high speed run. Normally I do it on low speed run, but I want to do it different this time. So we have to wait here about 45 minutes before we have 100%. Right, we are on the high speed run now. Yes, and the Germans here. <laughs> we have to cruise at 123. <laughs> yes, the high speed run. So right now the consumption is 227 watt hour per kilometer. And you see that we have this green steering wheel active. That means that auto steer is active. But when it's active, it's doing some weird shit. For example, it will try to steer me in a ditch all the time. Okay, let me see. I'm trying to demonstrate, but then, of course, when I try to demonstrate, it doesn't happen. Let me show you here. Yeah, you see, it will slowly float towards the right side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess for high speed, the auto stair is not very good. So, uh, I will turn it off. But, I have to say, the car is nice and quiet, though. Yeah. Very nice and comfy in here. Oh, you see, it keeps pulling. It constantly pulls to the right. <laughs> ah. We are back at dawn. So let me show you now. At the first, at the 90 test, we had the consumption 149. Back then, I didn't know uh, the, the error. And then, by the time I drove here, right at the round bar where I measure it, it was showing 180.5. Well, I estimated to 180.5 just looking at when it switched over to 880 and then look again when it switched over to 181. So by the time we came back here at the own discharge, it was 181. So that's how I estimated 180.5, which means that this car actually underreported distance by uh, 1% roughly. It could be 0.8, it could be 0.9. We don't know exactly, but close enough. So it means that we have actually pretty nice um, consumption numbers, as you see now. And again, on par with the other cars, when, with the, the Stellantis cars, uh, it has the same battery. But in this case, I will actually count 42.9 uh, kilowatt hour because even though the display shows dash, 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 uh, we still have 6% left. And I feel slightly more confident driving under zero with when you, have, when you have some indication that you have some juice left. And actually the, the experts in the live stream, they claim that we have even more beyond that one, uh, which makes sense because when I tested this car, a similar car, it was an E28 last year, I measured 45 kilowatt hour, but I, maybe back then the, the, the percentage and zero was um, different. And that's how you got Maybe back then zero was absolute zero or very close to absolute zero. And now it seems like they have put a little bit buffer. But I always have to count down to zero percent or zero kilometers uh, when I do my test because I can't expect normal people to go below zero or have any tools, OBD tools to see that. But okay, anyway, uh, very nice car overall. I have to say, uh, you guys probably want to ask me, well, how is the car? Well, interior wise, it feels a little bit cheaper, maybe, uh, but uh, on the other hand, these cars in this price range, they are not premium like Audi. Uh, but overall, very good car for the money and good range, good charging speed. And also, it seems to be quiet. We will figure out that in another video. So, uh, what, else, <laughs> what else is it to say? It's Opel, if you want it, in the, in the same group as the yeah, Stellantis PSA cars. Yeah, so for me, two thumbs up. I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.